BJ Matavish, welcome back to another DCG tutorial. This one we're doing 2010 uh, section B, question B1. It's a perspective geometry question, or perspective view question. Uh, as always, I'm going to read through it, uh, but it's only asking for the given plan, so you don't need to put in the elevation, that's just there for heights. So I'm going to start this elevation, or sorry, this plan, top left hand corner, so that you can project down your perspective view to the right, but don't keep it right on the edge because your auxiliary fan or your vanishing point might end up going off the sheet. So keep it top left but close or off the edge of the page, all right? And also there's a scale, one is to 20. So everything has to be divided by 20. So I'll put in the plan first and the spectator and I'll fast forward through that. Okay, so that is our plan done, and our spectator was at a 45 degree angle from point A here. Now, make sure to keep that line nice and light so it doesn't interfere with your uh, perspective later on. So, the drawing tells us, or the question tells us that, next thing we're gonna do is make a perspective drawing of the structure uh, given the following. So the spectator point is 1.8 meters from the corner A, so in this case, 90 mil, according to our scale. The picture plane is touching corner A and the horizon line is two meters above the ground line. So first things first is the picture plane. So the picture plane is going through point A. In order to figure out the angle of the picture plane, first thing we do is you join the external angles, the furthest points to the left and to the right, to the spectator. So the first point to the left hand side here, we're going to join it back to the spectator. First point to the right hand side, I'm going to join it back. That's going to give us an angle and we'll bisect that angle to figure out our projecting angle. Now I'm just setting up my adjustable set square to the angle because now that's just going to give me my picture plane. So the picture plane is always going to be perpendicular to your projection angle. So I'm going to project, put in the picture plane here, stick it in with the colour just so it stands out. So that's basically the plane that you're going to project your uh, view onto. Next thing is our horizon line and our ground line. So it's told us it's two, it told us two metres between the horizon line and ground line. Now the horizon and ground line are going to be parallel to the picture plane. So I'll put in the horizon line first. And our ground line is two meters below the horizon line. So divide that by 20, that's giving you your 100 mil. So now that we have our ground line and our horizon line, we can start putting in our perspective view. So first things first, I'm going to mark in point A here on our ground line, because A is on the ground. Before we can continue on, we need to put in our vanishing points. So to find the vanishing points, you must project from the spectator, and the angles you project at will be the same angles as the edges of the, of the object you're doing the perspective view of. So in this case, the vertical line here, the plan, and the horizon, uh, horizontal line there. So A can be joined back to VP1 and VP2 because that corner on the ground is joining, going back both to the left and to the right. So. Any horizontal, or horizontal line to the left is going to go back to VP1, any one to the right is going back to VP2. Okay, and vertical lines stay vertical. So to figure out where our ground line ends here to the right hand side and to the left hand side, you figure out where it ends here in the plan. So A is projecting back to this point here. Let's label a few of these points maybe. 
final where B is in our picture plane, you must join it back to the spectator where it crosses the picture plane, project that back down, and it should cross our line from A to VP2. And we already have it joining back to the spectator, so find your point B here, project it back down, and that is point B in the perspective view. Same thing with C, just fast forward to this one. Now, to split up this drone, to figure out what we're gonna do from section to section, I'm gonna start off with the steps. We're gonna put in the height for the steps, and also there is a, a cut going underneath the stand there. There's an angle, we'll put that in as well. So our heights are 20, 20, and 20, or 200, but with the scale of 20 mils. So we can put in true length on our height here from A, our line there from A, because it's on the picture plane, therefore heights will be true on the picture plane. So we can put in our 320s here and project them back to VP1 and back to VP2. Okay, and they'll be giving you your height for the three different steps. Sorry, 10, 10 and 10 is our measurements. So, our first step is right on the front edge here, okay, and it's up 20. And to figure out where it ends, if you look at your plan, see the hidden detail here? This is our first two steps and the long one at the back, and that's the wall at the end of the steps. So our step actually finishes here, and second one there, and so on. So this is the point to figure out where our first step is gonna end. So we need to project this point back to the spectator where it hits the picture plane, project it up. So now our first step is going across to here. So the step goes back then horizontally. So it goes back horizontal, join it back to VP1 if it's going back to the left hand side. Okay, now where does that line end? Because it's going back horizontal, it ends here. So we bring this point back to the spectator, it hits the picture plane, project it down, and it'll tell you where that line back to VP1 ends. Okay, so our first step is going along the surface here and back to that point there. Then go straight up, the height of which is our 20, so we might be, we might be better off putting in our steps in here on the left hand side. So let's bring these three points down to the spectator and put in the outline of the step on the left hand side. So we have our first step going back to this point here. Then it goes up to 20, goes back to this point here, up 20 and back to the far edge. And that is the outline. And we can draw them all back to VP2 to get the angles to the right hand side. So that is our outline for the steps here. Same thing on the right hand side. Go back to VP1, then it goes straight up until you hit the 20 mil here. That goes back to VP1 until you hit the 20 there. Vertical line stay vertical, so that goes straight up. Straight up according to our projection. And that gives us another point. And then that goes back to VP1. And that's the top step there though. So I'm gonna draw the outline of those steps in strong because there's nothing else uh, sitting in front of that. And I'm just gonna leave that baseline light so we can put in the cut. Okay, so that's the outline of the steps done. Next thing I'm gonna do is put the hole in underneath here. And as you can see there, it's in line with the top of the second step. So this is the top of the second step, so that will give it the height. In the plan, this is the start of it here at the back. So if we bring that point down, which we already have, it will show you that on the ground line is where it starts. It's in line with the top of the second step, which is here. And it joins back down right underneath where the first step ends back here. So it joins down right to the ground here. So that is gonna be our cut there. We can draw that now section in strong. And 
and there's no hidden detail in perspective but you see here you'll see that line cutting back underneath which was this hidden detail here in plan so we need to join that point back to VP2 in order to show that angle and we can put that little section in strong okay so that's the outline of the steps now it's told you to note there that you have to use an auxiliary fanchion point for the roof so let's get to the stage of where we can draw the roof so we'll put in the wall here the back section and up to the base of the roof there so the height for the wall section at the back here is 100 and uh, 1200 mil so again we're dividing that up and that's giving you your 60 mil so we can mark in 60 mil on our true length line here, our A line, and draw that back to the right hand side. And we don't really need it to feed you too, but that's fine. So this is a height here, and that was the back end of the wall there. So this has to be where the top of the, where the roof starts at the back, and this is where it starts at the front. So that line will go up strong here, that one will go up strong as far as there. How do I find that height over on the right hand side for the roof point here? Project them back to VP2 because they are still horizontal lines at the bottom of the roof. And this is your projection line. So that's giving us a point on the inside here. And that's going to be the flat surface there and this is at the back so we ignore that for the time being. Next we're going to put in the end of the wall here at the steps, alright, and the height for it is see there is in line with the top step here, so it is So I have a line in here strong that shouldn't be there because uh, they're sitting flush, so we'll remove that so it's an angle, it's joining these two points. We have where the line starts, we have where it ends. There's no need for an auxiliary function point, so we can join those in. And once you have one angle, it's going to be parallel on the other side. So we project that parallel to this point here. Now, this is where it would end. I'm going to keep this all lightly because that might be in underneath the roof. No, actually the roof is hitting off that, so we will see that. So we can put that much in strong and we can work on our auxiliary function point then. Okay, so that is as much as we can do now without our auxiliary function point. So to find the auxiliary function point we need to figure out, or we need to be given the angle. And in this case, our angle is 30 degrees. So what we do is, from our spectator line that is going to our VP1, we project an angle, in this case, angle of the roof, or whatever angle you're, look, you're given, uh, 30 degrees down from the spectator. Now, in this case, that's a horizontal line, so, and they've given us a nice angle, so we can just go 30 degrees from the spectator. In order to find the auxiliary function point, we need to go perpendicular from the spectator VP1 line. So, perpendicular. And that is giving you your auxiliary function point. So, that height H, we need to step that either above or below VP1 or VP2. So we need to figure out what angle the roof is going at. So you see here, it's from our, it's easier to see in the 3D graphic that it is sloping down this direction. Okay. So it's going across your view like so. So you could either step up from VP2 and put your auxiliary function point here, or step down. Okay, so our angle is like this. So I'm gonna go below VP1. So I'm gonna extend down VP1 and mark in this distance here to find the auxiliary function point. Okay, so that's our auxiliary function point. Now that we've found that, we can connect where the roof was starting, which was here, back to our auxiliary function point and project it up.
Now, he might end up going over the spectator, but that's fine. Now, the fine wood roof ends. It is here in the plan at point A. It's directly, as you see there in the 3D graphic as well, they're showing you that A is directly above it. So if you bring down A, which we already have here, where it cuts the two lines we're after doing there, which is here and here. The front of the roof is horizontal. This section here above AB is horizontal. So that means we don't need an auxiliary vanishing point to the right. They are going to vanish to the right hand side, i.e. VP2. It's vanishing back like so. Where does the roof end? It ends at B, which we already have projected down, which is here and here. And that point joins back to there. And you can see it's also going through your auxiliary vanishing point. And that's the roof finished, so we just draw it in strong now. Okay, and that is your perspective question done. So the fine auxiliary function point, just to recap on that, just make sure that whatever angle is given to you is projected down uh, or is projected from the spectator to your vanishing point line. That's your angle. You've got to go perpendicular to that spectator vanishing point line in order to find a height, and that can only be marked up or down from your vanishing points, depending on where you want the angle to go. Okay, so that's question done, and like other previous questions, this was a request, like you see here. So as always, I hope this helped, and um, if it did, please leave a like, and we'll see you in the next one.